I've been looking forward to doing this show for a while. A few months back, I had this idea of doing this show called Prospect Pitch, where I play the role of an NBA GM, and I let different guests come on the show, different guests that are not affiliated with um, the Locked On NBA Big Board channel. I let them come on the show and pitch me on a prospect. So I'm playing a little bit of devil, devil's advocate here. And in this episode, I have my guy, Erson Demar. If you are an NBA draft Twitter, you know this guy. He is probably the hardest working dude in the business. And in this episode, he is going to sell me on two prospects, Deron Holmes, and he believes that Mark Mitchell is a tw top 25 player. So stay tuned to hear Erson's argument. Big, big shout out to each and every person that has made the Locked On NBA Big Board Podcast your first listen of the day. And this episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to 100 bucks with the promo code Locked On. That is prizepicks.com. Promo code Locked On. I am your host, Rafael Barlow, the director of scouting for NBA Big Board and the founder of NBA Draft Junkies. But today I am a general manager of a team. I mean, this is, you know, we're just role playing here. And my guy, Airson is going to sell me on a couple prospects. But before we get into that, it's been a minute, man. How is everything going out? And you are in Amsterdam, right? Yeah, that's right, FTL. And it's an honor to be back, man. I think the season is on the roll. March is getting closer and, you know, everything's going great. Yeah, so not only is he recording this episode, I'm pretty sure it's close to midnight where he's at. He is also, like me, a father of a newborn. I think my son is three months older than your daughter. So you know what yeah, it's like yeah, to correct. to not get any sleep. And But it just shows like your dedication. Like I mentioned, like you are an extremely hard worker. You're always posting, no, no matter what time of day it is. I don't, I don't know if you sleep or you know how to like set your tweets on a timer because they're throughout the day. And actually, matter of fact, I haven't told you this, but I was at a Mavs game and somebody came up to me and they told me that they work with you and that they know you. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And so, I mean, they were raving about, about your work. So big props on that. And then um, you're, you're yeah, with shot you. quality now, right? What's your role yeah. with shot quality? I'm a contributor for shot quality. So I do the video breakdowns for them, which we post on Twitter. And uh, we work now with Shot Quality Plus. And what Shot Quality Plus is, you see the, the shot percentage bubbles before the shot launches. So, for example, uh, Brandon Miller is taking a three-point shot off the dribble. It says X, Y, Z percent, et cetera, et cetera. But it's measuring the quality of the shot, not particular outcome. So that's a game changer on itself. And, you know, the company is growing rapidly. A lot of NCAA teams are trying to suffer out and... A lot of teams are getting into it, and they switched the NBA as well. So a lot of good things going at short quality. So get, definitely give them a follow. Congratulations on that. I know you've, like I say, you work hard, and now you're actually um, you're an employee for your work. So man, keep it up. All right, let's let's get right let's let's get right into this. Right. So you're high on Deron Holmes, the yeah. four from Dayton, right? And let's just play a role. I don't know anything about him. So he, I need you to tell me why should I, as the GM of a team, let's say, let's just make up a team, the, the new team that is coming in Mexico City in the future. Now, that, that's a bad example because they wouldn't be in this draft. All right, let's just say I'm the GM of a team, right? And I'm the, I've been like busy with the trade deadline and scouting potential NBA players. I haven't paid any attention to college basketball yet. I'm waiting until the trade deadline is over. But you got this report about Deron Holmes. Why should I, as the GM of a team, pay close attention to him and put him on our on my radar? Well, to start off with Deron Holmes, I think the, the what you're buying is a lot of insurance. A player that's going to make guys around him a lot better. I think in today's NBA, we don't think a lot of is those old school uh, positions. And you can use him as a four over five. 
but more so defensively, he's going to guard two positions for you. And he's a solid rim protector. He's lightning quick. I think he makes a lot of good decisions in the pick and roll. And I think that's the biggest unique selling point for me for his defense. In pick and roll defense in today's game, if you're a big man, I think the position itself is a lot tough, but he makes the decisions that, you know, get can give all the teams a, a lot of comfort on that end of the floor. And overall, the offensively, he's a guy that, you know, the three-point shot is something that's still developing, his range. He's not taking a lot of threes, but I think he will be he will get there in the NBA. So that's something I'm banking on. But overall, without the jumper, he's still productive for a 20-year game at the college level. And, you know, you can see it in his game that feel-wise, that he comes from a basketball family. And I think in terms of adapting to the NBA, that's something I am very comfortable say in saying that he's going to adapt quite fast. And that's why I think that's the price he will pay with the higher pick. So Dayron Holmes, just to summarize it, is I think he's going to be a two-way player that's going to impact winning on both ends, but especially on the defensive end with his athletic tools, his quickness, and especially in the pick and roll defense where he's shown a lot of good things at Dayton this season. All right, so you say he's a four or five. Is he a stretch four? Is he a, a pick and roll four or five? Is he an energy guy, like a, a finisher? Like what would you say if you had to break down his defined skill set in the NBA? What would you say that is? I would say he would be a pick and roll as a five, but also a bit of a high energy guy overall. I think those are the two aspects that he will focus on mostly. I don't see him as a floor stretching player yet, but that will be something that he can add in the future. But mostly in his first two seasons, I think it will be more of a pick and roll option. All right. So what's his dimensions? Like, does he have a long wingspan? What do you think that, what, what do you think like he weighs? Like, can I pull him at the five? Can he anchor a defense? I think he can be, more of those combo bigs, I think more of four or five. If you look at his, I think his weight, he can get a bit stronger. I think that aspect is something that will stop him to play as a full-time five at the NBA level. But in terms of in the pick and roll offense, I think the, the way he reads screens, the way he's, he uses his quickness, and overall, you know, I think fuel-wise, that he's going to add a lot of things to the teams that's going to draft him. All right, so what are your thoughts on his touch around the rim? Is he someone that has like soft touch finishes or does it have to be a dunk? Like there are guys that they finish around the rim, but if it's not a dunk, they don't have the touch to finish through contact. I mean, does he have like a baby hook? Can he score off the right and left shoulder? So tell me about his, his finishing around the rim. His finishing around the rim is mostly dunks, but I don't think it's a biggest strength. If you look at the stats, I think he's leading the NCAA right now in total dunks made. The last season, he was right there as well. But I think he has some solid touch around the rim in terms of if he has to create his own shot in the post, he has a couple of moves that he can use. Mostly, I think I like his hook game. But overall, you, what I, but he hasn't showed it yet. He's mostly powering his way through the defense and finishing with a dunk. So I think that's an aspect that he has to show more in the, you know, the last few weeks of the season because most of his offense around the rim are just pure power finishes. So is he more a power guy or a finesse guy, or do you think he has a little bit of both? He has a little bit of both, but I think he's more of a finesse guy. Now, if you had to compare him to a current NBA player, like what would your comparison be? That's a tough one. I'm not a big fan of, you know, those comparisons, but I, I, I'm a fan of, you know, the nostalgic feeling. So I don't know why. Greg Monroe, he's a guy that reminds me when I saw him. I think in terms of touch. I think Monroe had the same thing, but Dayron is more so built for the modern NBA in terms of the, how he's playing at the defense. Man. But that's the guy that pops up immediately when I'm watching. So for Monroe, that means he's a, a really good interior post passer. Is that something that you feel like is a strength? Yes, definitely. If you look at the numbers, you don't really see it popping. But if you look at this game, he has the, the reads that he's, when he's getting a post entry pass, he's always looking always looking for the open shooter. I think in terms of spacing, I think the college game is a little bit tough scouting-wise to project it to the NBA, but he sees some open players. And I think in terms of feel, 
the team that Dayton this season is a lot better than last season. And you can see it back in his game. I think the reason that he's making is able to execute them a little bit better. Is he a like a guy that passes on the move? Does he hit cutters or like a short roll passer? How would you how would you say the best way to take advantage of his passing skills and his court vision? I think short roll passing in the NBA is really tough. So that's something I'm not really banking on when seeing him. But he's always looking for cutters and he's always looking for, you know, these movement shooters. And I think at Dayton, there are really a ton of those. But at the NBA level, he's going to find them much easier. All right. When we return, I have a few more questions about Dayron Holmes. But now I want to talk to you about Built Bar because it is February. And I know a lot of people had New Year's resolutions about eating healthy to start the year. And, you know, maybe you have and maybe you failed, but it's not too late. And if you're looking for something that is healthy and tastes good, then you got to try a Built Bar because with Built Bars, healthy is actually tasty. So you're probably wondering, like, what makes a Built Bar so good? And for starters, they're covered with 100% real chocolate. Yeah, that's right. It's healthy, but it's covered with 100% real chocolate. They come in unbelievable flavors like churro, peanut butter brownie, coconut almond. I don't know how they do it, but they find out a way to make it tasty and, again, healthy. It only has 130 ca- 30 calories, 4 grams of sugar, and a whopping 17 grams of protein. And now, if you're a Built Bar fan, you don't have to order on Built.com. You can go to your local Walmart or Sam's Club. At Walmart, just head to the pharmacy section, and you can grab a box of Built Bars. You can pick up a four box of cookies and cream, double chocolate, or coconut puffs. And if you want more, then you can go to Sam's. At Sam's Club, you can grab a 13-bar box with hit flavors, brownie, batter, and churro. You can thank me later. But if you're old school and you want to order online, you can go to Built.com. All right, the trade deadline is approaching and Locked On has you covered. So on Thursday, February 9th, please tune in to the Locked On YouTube at 2 o'clock Eastern to hear reaction from the trades that will change the rest of the season. Who becomes a contender and who is tanking for the future? Subscribe to Locked On NBA YouTube and do not miss a deal. We already had a big trade this weekend. So I'm, I'm looking forward to what goes on this week do you have any big trades that you think are going to happen or let me let me ask a different question do you think the knicks i know you're a knicks fan do you think the knicks are going to make a move i don't think i think they're going to stay put i think they're going to stay put all right so we started off this first segment talking about dayron holmes from dayton and i have a couple questions for you regarding him so i'm looking at my my list my scouting list so if you had to give him a grade, A, B, C, or D, if I said, is he unselfish, what would your grade be for unselfish? And B. then you can also give an F if, if the guy isn't. <laughs> so what would you say no, as far as being that's unselfish? An a. an a. That's an A. Motor. Motor is, uh, is a B. B. His instincts. It's an A. Quick decision making. I'm leaning towards B and A, but I'm gonna give the B right now. Can he execute plays with energy? An A. All right. Now let's talk about his physical characteristics. Body length. I think it's a B. Quickness. It's a B plus. Speed in the open floor. Can you run the floor? It's a B plus as well. All right. Overall athleticism. I will give the B, B minus. Okay. Physicality and toughness. That's a B as well. And then his positional size. I'm leaning towards A minus. A minus. All right. Now here's a big question. If he doesn't succeed in the NBA, just based off of his on-court performances in a style of play, we're not factoring anything off the court. What would be the reason he does not succeed in the NBA? I think the biggest reason would be if the the jumper doesn't really translate to the NBA level and he doesn't take enough of them. And right now, that's what I see, not a risk, but what can go wrong because he's not taking a ton of those jumpers while he can. So 
I think he should be shooting as much as he can. Although, of course, that's my not baby as well, but that's the primary news. Now, let's talk about defense before we move on to the next prospect. Defense, would you say he's a guy that is a multiple effort defender? And does he have any issues staying in front of in front of the ball? I think if you put him against the quicker wings in the NBA, he's going to struggle. But that goes for a lot of players. But, you know, for the taller wings and the forwards, he can stay in front of him with, with ease, I would say, because he has the quickness and he has the strength to challenge a lot of guys. I said I didn't want to give him an A because if you put him in front of a guy like Embiid, for example, yeah. he's going to obviously struggle. Yeah, no, good luck. Not too many people are successful. All right, rebounding. What do you think of him as a rebounder? Is he – all right, one, is he a good rebounder? Two, is he a guy that competes for long rebounds? Is he like a a, a guy that – rebounds come to him or is he someone that hunts for rebounds like he may miss assignments on defense because he wants to be close to the to the rim to get boards like we've seen you know guys that really pride themselves on being good rebounders and sometimes they'll leave guys open or miss assignments because they want to get the rebound which you know if a guy makes the shot it it hurts but if he misses then they end up getting the rebounds, but it doesn't always show up on the stat sheet as they play bad defense because the average person can look at the box score and say, this guy had 14 rebounds. So I think of like Hassan Whiteside, for example. Um, so as far as like him as a rebounder, what would you say? Is he an effort rebounder or is he just takes advantage of him being athletic and, and can jump? I think he has instincts. Positioning makes a lot of sense. So he scored good in that one, but overall as a rebounder, in terms of box house, I think he's decent, maybe above average. All That's right, fine. last okay, last question regarding Holmes. All star, top starter, starter, rotation, roster, training camp, or Europe. I think he's going to be a starter. I don't really see an all-star in but a good start at the NBA level. All right. Well, Dayron Holmes. So now let's talk about Mark Mitchell. This one is a little bit surprising and a little different. You believe that he is worthy of a top 25 pick. Who is Mark Mitchell? Well, Mark Mitchell from Duke, five-star recruit. I think the reason that I'm really so high on him is that I think finding a good role player at the NBA is tough on itself. And he's already playing in the role that I see him play at the NBA level. And he's embracing his role. So I think in terms of, you know, dedication to the game and accepting, you know, the the, the, the play he's in right now, he scores plus points. And what I like about Mark Mitchell is that he's a tremendous slasher, two-hand finisher, can power himself to the rim. And overall, you can see a lot of flashes of the complete package that today's forwards need to have. All right, what are, what are his physical characteristics and what position do you think that he'll be the most successful playing in the NBA? Well, at 6'8", 220, I think he's destined to play the three, but he can also play and guard the four. I think ultimately he will play the three. And overall, the, the, the low usage of our character of his game, I think that's where he's already showing that he can take a role like that in terms of how he creates his own offense, especially in the open floor as a grab and go option, as he's a very good rebounder, especially for his size. And overall, views him as a slasher in the corner. The three point shot is, is decent, but still work in progress, but he's getting there. I think overall, if you look at the shooting numbers, you say he's a good shooter, but I don't really think he is a good shooter yet. But the touch is promising, but that needs a lot of work. But overall, what, what excites me is his slashing ability, his finishing at the rim with both hands. I think he takes away a lot of weaknesses that you might expect because he can counter them. I think the two-way finishing, two, sorry, the two-way finishing is a big strength, which I think gives him extra draft stock in, for me. And on the defensive end, that's where it gets really uh, special with him. So you think defense is going to be his, his calling card? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Because I think if you look at his quickness, he can handle the quicker wings. But if you look at his strengths, he can also and all the stronger, the big wings and the points in the NBA. And I've said he can guard three and four, but I think 
that would ultimately be something that's asked of him. And overall, he's made good, good decisions. I mean, he doesn't miss rotations. Overall, he reads the defense very well. He's this called, called ball watching. Of course, that's just that's a standard if you want to play in the NBA. But I think at Duke, he's playing at a, in a team that didn't have the league, didn't have Wyatt Lively. But he still accepted this role and playing the same way as he did in day one until now. And you can see the progress in this game. I think he played very well against North Carolina a couple of days ago as well. All right. When we return, I have quite a few more questions about Mark Mitchell, but I want to talk to the audience about prize picks. Now, if you're wondering what is prize picks, I guess the best way to describe it is daily or daily fantasy made easy. You just pick two to six players, and if they will score more or less than their prize picks projection, you can win up to 25 times your money on any entry. There's no competing against people. It is just you versus the projections available. Price Picks offers projections on any sport that you watch. NBA, NFL, Major League Baseball, NHL, PGA, college football, college basketball for men's and women's soccer, esports. They even have cricket. And entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It is that easy. They're safe and there's fast withdrawals. And it is currently operational in 30 states plus Canada. Over 30 states, I should add. So download the Prize Pick app or go to prizepicks.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. If you are a first-time user, you can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with the promo code Locked On. If you deposit $100, bucks, Prize Picks will give you $100. Bucks. If you deposit $50, Prize Picks will give you $50. So do not forget to do not forget to enter the promo code Locked On at sign up for instant deposit match up to $100. All right, last segment. Me and my guy, Ersan, we're talking about Mark Mitchell. You believe he is a top 25 pick. I have not seen that for 2023, maybe 2024. So tell me a little bit about his offense. You say that you think that he is a three. Can he handle? Is he a shot creator or is he a complimentary guy? I think he's more so playing as a complimentary guy right now. But what I didn't actually mention is that I believe he can be a shot creator for itself, but he hasn't really had the opportunity yet. And overall, if you look at his handle, I think it's good, but it's not great. But I think it's good for his position and the age he's in right now. He's really, he's, of course, he's in need of development, but overall, if he gets opportunity to play with more freedom and on-ball reps, I think he can repay that his trust. And now at Duke, he isn't really in that position. But overall... I think he can be a shot creator for itself and bank on the strength that he's already possessing now. All right. So when you say you think he can be a shot creator, is it based off like high school film? Is it based off like small flashes? And then if he's a shot creator, is he a guy that has like shake and bake to get to a spot? Or is he like a guy that just doesn't waste any dribbles, straight line driver, gets to his spots and, and, and pulls up? Or is he kind of like a this 3-4 hybrid that if he can't beat you off the dribble, he has the strength to kind of turn it into a, a back down. So, like, describe a little bit about his handle and why you believe in him as a shot creator long term. Well, I think I went back to his high school tape, and there you see more. Overall, I think he would – I would describe him as a hybrid 3-4 and four because he didn't really play as a, as a guard at high school level. But I think he played a lot of very good shooters, for example, Tamar Bates. I think – and together with him, you can see that you know with the shooter in the backcourt, you can use that. I think he, when you look at him off the dribble, it's not really wowing in the sense of that looks really flashy, but overall the substance is there. I think that's important to me because I really don't, don't, don't care about the flash. But he's a guy that will power himself to the rim, whether it's uh, attacking a closeout or just off the dribble and at the high school Level, I think that's a little bit tougher for me to scout because the level of defense is different than the college level. So that makes it a little bit more of a challenge. But overall, his power, his finesse, and overall the two-way finish, the two-hand finishing is what makes it really easy for an inside the arc. And the three-point shot is, is still a work in progress. I think he's shooting close to 40% this season on low volume, but the low volume speaks to itself because it doesn't really look like 40% on an NBA level yet. 
but you can see that the touch is decent, maybe average, even a little bit above that, but nothing more than that yet. But I think he has the touch to really develop in that maybe your year two or year three. In that way. All right. So as a shooter, do you think he is a guy that is going to be able to shoot off movement and off screens, or is he going to be someone that is going to be effective as a standstill shooter with space? More stationary. I think that's his strength right now because he, he it's, it's been a full season before when he shows some of the movement shooting. I don't think movement shooting will be something that's asked of him, mainly due to the role he's playing right now and he's thriving on right now. So I would say it's a stationary shoot. All right. What about potential as a pull-up shooter? Do you think that's something that is in his arsenal or do you think it's more so of a, like a 3 and D guy, best case scenario? I think that's his floor. I think the pull-up shooting is possible, but it will take some time. For example, if I look at the guy like OG and Anobi, he has really, when he joined the Raptors at first, the first couple of seasons, he's continuously added to his game until he exploded into maybe the all-star level guy that he is right now. Now, I'm not going to say that uh, Mark Mitchell is OG and Anobi, but I expect something like that to happen to him in the NBA as well because of the opportunity to play and on the high school tape that I've seen. All right. How would you describe him as a finisher? More so power. I think it's a little bit less finesse, but more power. But I think he's more so using his strength to his advantage because of the two-hand finishing. That's something I value a lot because he takes away a glare weakness. If he has a one-hand finisher, it makes it easier to guard him. But I think as a two-hand finisher, he can, you know, be creative. What about and that's as something a... that he has to do a little bit more, but he can do that. Okay. Do you think he's a a guy that is going to be able to thrive in the open floor and be a transition finisher? Or is he more so a guy that you think would be a transition floor spacer? But I think he's playing more as a transition floor spacer right now because – Usually when he gets a rebound, it's just running. But he's always looking for his teammates first, and that's something I value a lot. I think at the college level, that's what you see with the, the transition finishes. They mostly use, for, use it for their own bucket. But when he, what he's doing very well is you know, trusting his teammates, trusting the system. He's always looking around. If he can maybe find the ball, and if that needs the ball. or Yeah, and when he, could, when he does, of course, when he can, then he will attack the rim with Will. But overall, I think he's always putting a task at number one rather than his instincts. And I see that as a strength. All right. As far as his shooting, does he have a quick release? Or is it like a average release? Like, how does he get his shot off? And then another question I have for you after that is, how does he finish? I know you say he uses both hands, but does he use floaters? And how does he finish in traffic? I think the shot is a little bit, not slow, but I think too slow for the NBA level, okay. especially with the, the level of defense that is going to be more intense at the NBA level. So that's something that he has to work on. And regarding his finishing, I think it's mostly on, on layups, on creativity at the rim, but mostly on layup. I think in terms of the floater, that's something I haven't really seen that much. And I don't think that will be fair for him to expect that. Okay. Now, what about his passing is he a ball mover or do you think that he could be a, a playmaker i think he can be a playmaker especially in the in the short role or as a as a post entry passer i think what he does very well is he's using his strength to win some ground in the post but with you know in this current role that's not really expected a lot of him but that's something I like of him because he's really a perfect instinct passer. He's always looking around, even with if he doesn't have the ball in the sense, always looking around and always eyes for his teammates. And I think the passing touch is decent, but promising. But there's more so opportunity to pass. I think that's something that he needs to get more. So is he a guy that will be able to find cutters? Like, is he a live dribble passer? Or I think he's more of a... Of, you know, this post entry pass, you know, if you if you see him seeing in the post, he's mostly using to power himself to win some more ground. 
but what I'm seeing in, in this tape is that he's always in the meantime looking for them, looking for the shooters. I don't think the live dribble passing is something right there, but usually when he's taking his hands or creating something off the dribble, it would be for itself. So that's something that might get there in the future. But as a Borso and, and the onboard effort that he's getting, he's looking for his own shot, creating his own shot. All right, let's talk about his defense. Is he a versatile defender that can defend all over the floor? Do you think he can only defend threes and fours? Just talk to me a little bit about him on the defensive end of the floor. I think on the defensive end of the floor, that's where he's going to earn his money in the NBA level. Because when I look at him, I think he can guard two, three, and four. And eventually, when he gets stronger in the NBA, I think he can be one of those guys that can play as a smaller five on defense and held his own. Because at uh, 6'8", 220, he's really strong. You can see the strength in his game. And overall, you can see the, the quickness as well, especially in the decision-making. And he doesn't miss rotation. So if you look at today's NBA, it's full of switches. You have to be able to switch continuously. And that's something that is really doing very strong. And what, what surprises me is that He's playing very aggressive, but he has learned to play aggressive without fouling. He's averaging maybe a foul a game, slightly over a foul, of, a foul a game. So he's using his aggression, sorry, his aggressiveness in his advantage. And he's learning how to you know, play without fouling. I think that's the most important aspect for a guy that's going to play in the three or the four. All right. Do you think that he is a, a good individual defender? Or, or actually, do you think he's a better individual defender or a better team defender? Or do you think that he's I think he's a way better team defender. Way better team defender. I have a couple more questions for you. Put you on the hot seat a little bit. I know you don't like the comparisons. Do you? The first comparison that comes to mind, and don't be afraid to be wrong or whatever, just the first comparison that comes to mind. Trust your gut. Uh, my gut is, I mentioned it before, OJ and OJ. I think that's going to be... If the opportunity to play is there, if he goes to a team that's going to use him and develop him for a couple of years, of course, that's the standard to succeed. But if he gets the chance, I can, I think he's going to be like OG and Anobi in terms of how the career is going. All right. All-star, top starter, starter, rotation, or roster? I think he can be a top starter. Top starter. All right, man. Well, that wraps up this episode. Big shout out to you. You were definitely prepared, did your homework, which I didn't expect anything less than that from you because I know you watch a lot of basketball. Because I know there's a lot of people that want to get involved in scouting, right? And now you are officially getting paid to do what you love to do. Can you just give the audience like just an example of how much film you watch or how many players you you watch on a daily basis or even on a weekly basis? I think my goal on a weekly basis is to watch two full games at least, usually in the weekends. And what I do is I focus on one particular player. And I think the advantage is that you can get to, to know that player very well. The disadvantage is that, yeah, you miss some other parts of, you know, maybe other players that are excelling in a game. And I'm always watching the, the, the games based on basketball where they perform less. Versus one they will perform average to find some trends, what, what went wrong. And overall, I'm just spending my time to watch film, not highlights, but more so defensive positions. That's what I focus a lot, watching a lot of players on defense. How are they performing on defense? So that would be my advice for the, for the audience is just focus on the defense first and try to, you know, unlock a player, how he's performing, what is body language, how is he with his teammates, how is he? Is he always looking around? How is he, how active is he? Do you see him? How how is his focus? I think that will be my first thing that I focus on personally when watching film. So, but overall, watching film is the fundament of you know doing this. And my next goal is that something I promise myself to do in the next few years is watch players live, go to workouts, go to tournaments, especially here in Europe. So that's a lot of you know untapped potential that I want to discover. Yeah. So we all have our, our different philosophies. I know mine for this year is to watch two prospects a day, every day, two prospects a day. If I only watch one, then I got to make up for it and do three. And while it doesn't seem like a lot, at the end of the month, it could add up between 55 to 60 different prospects that I have film on, or at least I have in my notes. 
And I think if I do that between now and the draft, I'm going to be pretty much covered. You know, you name a prospect that's NBA, you know, NBA worthy or, or an NBA prospect. I figure I should be able to have some knowledge of that prospect, but you know, that that's just me. I mean, I'm, I mean, I want to be really good at this. I want to have as much knowledge as, as possible. It's not something I do casually. I mean, yes, it is fun, but I'm extremely passionate about it. And I know you are too, because you put out so much, so much work and content. And every day, I promise you, every day, somebody's asking me, like, how can I get my stuff out there? You know, how can I do this? Or, or find, And I just tell people, you got to put out content. Yeah, you just got to do it. Is your is your resume. Like, you can't apply for a job working in basketball. You got to have some type of content that is your resume. And you you are a great example of that because you have, I mean, you put out so much work. I mean, I read an article. I was going back reading articles about players from, I don't know if it was last year, maybe it was two years ago. And when I pull up the article, it's always your tweet that pops up, right? It's a tweet of a video that you made. So big shout out to you. Thank you so much for you, the audience, for making this podcast a success. Now for your second listen, check out the Game to Game podcast, Game to Game NBA, every moment, every performance, every result. Locked on Game to Game covers every game from across the NBA with local analysis that only Locked on can deliver. So follow the Game to Game on Locked on NBA, available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcast. Once again, this is Rafael Barlow with Airsign Dimmer. He just gave a prospect pitch on Dayron Holmes and Mark Mitchell, and we are out. <laughs>